Hello, and welcome to today's episode of Tea Tactics and Tenacity. I am your host, Jen Herman with Jen's Trends. And in today's episode, we are going to be talking about uh, specifically why engagement and reach is so low on Instagram right now. Now, the questions, this is a kind of a combination of questions that were submitted by two viewers uh, over the last, I don't know, maybe four or six weeks. And it's something that ties into what's going on with the Instagram news this week and all these things that are going on. So we're going to answer that. I'm going to pop that here in a comment so that everyone that's popping in uh, can see that that will be the topic that we're discussing in today's live show of Tea Tactics and Tenacity, where I have my cup of tea. We talk about one Instagram tactic. And then we also talk about tenacity, life, business, parenting, all the things that go on. So I am going to, if I can, can I, boop, boop, does that work? Okay, there we go. And then I'm going to, no, that's not what I wanted to do. Hold on. I want to turn that back on. Uh, where is my do not disturb? I forgot to turn that on before we went live. <laughs> I don't need people calling and interrupting the show. All right. So we're going to talk about why engagement and reach. Not teach. It's hard to do this on when it's up like this on a tripod. And reach is so low on IG post. I'm gonna pin that. Boom. So now everybody can see. Hello to everybody who's popping in. Uh, we've got uh, Jonathan is here. Hey, good to see you. We've got Lori. Hello, so good to see you. Sean is here as well. Great to see all your faces popping in on this Sunday morning. For me, it is sunny. The sun came out today. It's gorgeous. So I'm excited to talk about this topic uh, a little bit more, which again, these questions were submitted uh, by Natalie and Yasher over the last couple of a number of weeks. Uh, every now and then I put out a, a call for, hey, do you have questions you want me to answer? Which reminds me, I have a current Instagram story up. If you have a question you want answered, reply to that story or leave a comment here on this video and I will gather those questions for future episodes of Tea Tactics and Tenacity where every question we answer is a question submitted by a viewer just like you. These aren't the questions I want to answer. These are the questions you want answered. Jonathan is popping in from a conference in Austin, Texas. Well, thank you for making the time during your conference. Hopefully the conference is going well. We've got my weather at home here as well. Hello, so good to see you. Amy, great to see you. So again, this is something that, I mean, I could answer this question literally every week. Why is engagement so low? Why is my reach so low? Uh, Ken Watson is in San Diego. He finally made the move. So excited for you. And at least the sun is coming out today. Since you've gotten here, we've had our May gray dismal weather. So finally, you'll get some sunshine. So every day, every week, every month, I'm constantly getting questions from people saying, Jen, engagement is horrible. Jen, you know, reach is so low right now. We had our office hours and profit your profile a week and a half ago, a couple weeks ago. Um, and it was, we had, the question came up again, like my engagement is so low. And I was like, I know, like it's across the board. It is so bad. Um, it's, I mean, I, like I've been telling people, I'm like, I'm getting like 22 likes on a photo. I've got 25 plus thousand followers and I'm getting 22 likes on a photo. Like it, it's mathematically impossible to get engagement that low. Does it mean I'm doing it wrong? No. Does it mean that you're doing it wrong? No. Does it mean you should be doing something differently? Possibly. Um, you know, it's always a test environment. What worked a month ago may not work today. What worked six months ago will probably not work today in the same way on this platform. So things definitely can change and there are, might be things that you need to look at. But a couple things I really want to point out to remind you that, you know, it's not a, it's not as bad <laughs> It's not just you, like we're all in this same boat. We're all experiencing this situation together. And there's a couple factors that tie into this. One is just pure blown platform saturation, right? Like you've got a platform where you have over 2 billion active users a month. So that's a lot of people consuming content. It's a lot of people creating content. And so as the platform grows and algorithms go into play and all these things happen, it impacts how your content is distributed. 
and there's a lot of confusion about how the algorithm actually works and, and what it does and I have a million things that I answer this. So I'm not going to dive too much today on algorithm because we could be here for the next hour if I did that. But it's important to understand that the algorithm is sorting your content. It's not hiding your content. Instagram does not hide content. They just simply sort it for your followers. And if they don't follow, if they don't go back far enough, they may not see your content, but technically it's there. It's none of it's hidden like it is on Facebook. But as we get more users, as more people create more content, as more people are on the platform, you know, if I'm following 6,000 people, there's no way I can see 6,000 pieces of content if every one of them posted once a day. Impossible. If they all posted once a week, that would be 6,000 pieces of content I would need to see a week. How could I possibly, unless I lived on the platform, see all that content? Now, I'm not following 6,000 people, but even imagine if you were following 300 people. And if every one of those people posted every single day, would you be able to see 300 pieces of content a day? Are you on the platform enough to see that? No, most people are not. You're maybe consuming 10, 15, 20, 30 pieces of content in the feed, maybe growing through some stories, maybe you're scrolling through some reels. But again, how many reels are you really seeing per sitting? Are you seeing 100 reels in, in their entirety? Are you actually watching 100 reels? No, of course not. So it's hard to get in front of the audiences because of the platform saturation, because of just the pure amount of content that is out there. Now, I've also talked about this repeatedly where things are different now post COVID. We're starting to kind of recalibrate, but pre COVID we had a status quo. So we had this many consumers consuming this much content, this many creators creating this much content. During COVID, consumership went up, right? People were on their platforms, they were consuming content, there was nothing else to do. Brands realized you weren't coming in the stores, you weren't doing anything else, how else were we gonna get in front of you? We we're gonna get on social media. So brands started creating more content. Then as things started to regulate, consumer went down. Consumers went back to work, back to school, back to life, back to activities, back to schedules, and they're not living on Instagram four hours a day anymore. They're back to 20 minutes, 60 minutes that kind of thing, right? But did brands slow down their, their production of content? No. They were like, well, we got used to creating five times a week when we used to only do once or twice a week. We're gonna keep creating five times a week. So there's this new disparity. It's not right, it's not wrong, it's not good, it's not bad, it is what it is. But there is more content being created now than there was four years ago. Additionally, three years ago, Reels came out. <laughs> four years ago now, I guess. And with that, change the demographic, change the con way content was consumed, change the way content was created. You may go into the feed, you look at a couple things there, but then you pop over to the Reels feed. You're not staying in one feed. You're going back and forth between two, or maybe you go right into Reels and don't go to the feed. So you're missing the opportunity to get that viewership. So this has made a big impact on how people consume content right? When they see it, how much they're seeing, there's a huge impact from this shift. Again, not right or wrong, not good or bad, just what it is. Uh, Jonathan just said, and reels, so many people doing so many reels, right? Like there's all these things out there, you know, oh, you got to create a reel a day. You got to, you know, reels, 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 create all these reels. So people are, cons are creating a ton of video content and you have to be navigated through that feed to see what content you're going to see and the algorithm is sorting all that for you. So just for those reasons alone, we've seen this huge shift, right? We've seen a decrease in reach. We've seen a decrease in engagement. That is just reality because of these circumstances. Now, that being said, the last few weeks, it has been abysmal, abysmal, horrible. And I literally said in office hours, which was like a, about a week and a half ago, it wasn't this past work week, but the week before, I literally said, I'm like, my guess is they are doing something because whenever we see these major glitches, like major, like substantially aware that our reach is really bad or that our engagement is really bad, they're usually tweaking something on the back end and it ends up breaking things on the front end before the thing rolls out. 
And I literally said, I'm like, they're working on something. Something is coming. And what do you know? Like five days later, Instagram announced a huge algorithm change. And I was like, ding, 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 ding. That's why it sucks. So when they make these algorithm changes, they're they're tweaking things, right? They have to change the algorithm. They're They're testing things. They're doing things. And when they do that, it breaks things on the front end, but we don't know that they're doing it. We don't know what they're working on. We don't know what's happening, but we can see it in the impact. And with that came the big algorithm news from this week. So yes, all of these things, and then obviously clearly with working on this, it was drastically impacting that reach and that engagement. Now, when Natalie submitted the question, she said, will engagement ever come back? It's super demotivating. So she had made the comment that, you know, her engagement is way down and it's, you know, she literally said, is it ever going to come back? It's really demotivating. And here's the thing. I don't know if it's ever going to come back. It's probably never going to come back to what it was. I'm just tilting the camera just a little bit more if I can pop that up there a little bit so I can actually see my face over all these comments. Um, I don't know if it's ever going to come back. To be honest, I don't think it will. You know, when we used to get 300 likes on a photo and now you get 50, uh, when you used to get 2,000 likes on a reel and now you get 100, I don't think it's going to go back. To be completely honest, that's not something we can't go back. Again, platform saturation, different types of content, different types of consumption, more content creation, all of these things going on, we can't go back. But some things to be aware of is that you don't want to isolate the type of content you're creating. So like I just excuse me, just mentioned, a lot of people are like, reels, 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 do reels, all the reels. But if you're only creating reels, you are missing the opportunity to connect with people in the feed. So if you're only doing reels and you're not doing photos, if someone is not a video consumer, like I am not a huge video consumption person. I, I will watch reels. Yes, I do go in there and I do scroll through and I see some things and I do get caught up on a couple, you know, trends or whatever. But in general, I'd prefer to be in the feed. So if you're only creating reels, you have less likelihood of getting in front of me. Conversely, if you are a reels consumer, if you don't consume photos and you're always in the reels feed, if I'm only creating photos, you're never going to see my content because you won't be in the feed, you'll be in the reels feed and I'm not creating reels, you're not gonna see my content. So we don't wanna go all exclusively one thing or the other. Jennifer Weather is here, hello, beautiful sunshiny face, hello. Um, and you're so sweet, <laughs> I love you too. <laughs> so it's not about one type of content. You can't go all in on one type of content and expect that to be the answer. It's actually about diversifying. It's about making sure you have the videos. It's about making sure you have the photos, that you have the carousels, that you have the stories. You have to be making a mix of content. So if you're all in on reels, great, use it for a period of time. But at some point, you're going to have to come back to doing photos and carousels or you risk alienating a portion of your audience. Over time, your analytics tell you where you should be. Should you be doing more reels? Possibly, but it doesn't mean you ignore photos. We never want to go all or one on whether it's just reels or just feed content. So we want to make sure that we're mixing that. That is going to help. But then additionally, understanding how the algorithm works for your existing audience, because everything that came out in this week's announcement has nothing to do with your followers. I have been touting this. I've been talking about this. I am so tired of talking about this <laughs> because I'm like, okay, I've said it like 400 times in the last four days. Like, but most of people still haven't heard it. So I'm still saying it. I'm still going to keep talking about it. But everything that came out with the Instagram algorithm change this week, where they talked about how now, you know, they're going to change the distribution of reels and it's going to help creators and they're protecting the small creators and all these sorts of things. Great! By all means, do that. I'm super excited about it, but that does not impact your followers. That is for reach and distribution to your non-followers, the people who don't know who you are. Explore, recommendations, search, those sorts of things. 
So if you want to improve your engagement and you want to improve your reach, you also need to think about your existing audience. How are you serving them? How are you empowering them? How are you giving them content that they want? How are you teaching them, educating them, entertaining them? What are you doing for your existing audience? Not just creating those short, short reels to attract new followers. Really quickly, a bunch of comments are popping in. Uh, Jennifer, you're amazing. I love you. Uh, Jonathan saying, and infographics have been great recently too. Good to know. It's not something I traditionally use. Um, but yes, infographics can be very helpful or the carousels where you put like a stat per carousel and you swipe through. So you take what was a vertical infographic and you can almost make it um, horizontal, like through slides is a great way to do it. Hello to more beautiful people popping in. Jennifer says preach. Jonathan says yes, 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 yes. So when you're looking to improve your reach and your engagement, a couple things you want to do. And it doesn't matter what I say. Doesn't matter what I say. I can tell you all day to do one thing or another, but if your insights tell you otherwise, honey, you're going to go do the other thing. You're not going to listen to me or any other guru. Okay. So what you need to do is go into your Instagram insights. You need to go to your professional dashboard, go to your insights, wherever you want to get into that information. And you want to sort your content for reach, or you want to sort your and your content for engagement. Now it will default the last 30 days. You can go to 90, you can go more. You can figure out a time period that you want to look at. You want to look at a period of time within the last six months, but you do not want to look at content from two, three years ago because that don't matter no more. We've had so many algorithm shifts, We've, and not even really algorithm shifts, but little tweaks here and there. Nothing major has changed until this week. But we've had so much consumer behavior change. We've had so much, you know, brand creation changes. We've had all these things, as Ken says, data, data, data. We've had all these things change that if you're looking at data from two years ago, it does not matter. So we want to look at content from the last six months or less. So within the last one to six months is the data you want to be looking at. And sort your content for reach and then sort your content for engagement. When you go in, there's a filter up top. You choose that. It goes like from highest to lowest, and then you can choose the metric. So you can choose whether you want it by, you know, shares. Do you want it by engagement? Like these sorts of things are in there. So one for reach, that's always my primary metric. And then two is for engagement, secondary metric. So you're going to go in and you are going to see all your top performing posts for reach. You know what you're going to do? You're going to do more of that. <laughs> so what are the pieces of content for you that are getting the most reach? Is it a reel? Is it a story? Is it a feed post? Is it a carousel? Is it entertainment? Is it engagement? Or sorry, <laughs> entertainment or education? Is it something tutorial based? Is it behind the scenes? Is your face in the video or not? What is it about that content that got the additional reach? Same thing for engagement. What is getting you the engagement? What is driving those behaviors? Do more of that. I'm not in your insights. I can't tell you what those answers are. If you want to work with me, I'm happy to. <laughs> you can reach out to me and I have a variety of services, including Instagram audits, where this is what we do. I'm working with a client right now uh, on an audit. and I love doing them because we get to pick up the data and figure out what's actually working. I just worked with a, one of my members. Uh, we jumped on a call really quick and she's like, okay, can you just take a look and see? And we did. And I was like, you know, here's something really odd, but the color green works really well for you. Every time you have the color green, you're outdoors wearing green colors. Your engagement is significantly higher. Who knew? Typically the color blue will drive more engagement. But for her audience, the color green was a significant impact on performance. So these are the things you want to be looking at to find out what works for you so that you can create the content that is going to get more reach, more engagement, more distribution within your existing followers. Because if you're serving them, they're going to share your content. If you're creating shareable content, they're going to put it in their stories. They're going to DM it to people. It's going to get saved for them to come back to you and get repeat views. All of these are positive indications to, al to the algorithm. So you want to make sure that you are serving your existing audience, not just going all in 
on this week's news about the new algorithm shift, which is for your non-followers. Great news, super excited. I got a bunch of posts about it. If you wanna know, just go to my profile. I've got all my most recent posts are all about this week's algorithm change. So go check those out. You can get a ton more information. I also have a blog post up at jenstrends.com that goes over everything you need to know. So just go to jenstrends.com, go to the blog. It's the most recent blog post and it breaks down everything you need to know about this week's algorithm change. But again, that's all for non-followers. And when it comes to reach and engagement, you've got to be focusing on your followers as well. You do not want to alienate them. So Hopefully that answers the questions for both Natalie and Yashar in terms of what was submitted uh, in regards to, you know, why is reach so low and, you know, why is your engagement so low and what can you do about it? Hopefully those are some tips to help you out with those kind of two in one question. Again, these are all things we talk about in Profit Your Profile, which is my membership community dedicated to teaching Instagram marketing. As I said, we just did a whole bunch of stuff within the membership related to these types of things. We do training on this uh, on Friday's recap. So every the first Friday of every month, I break down all of the Instagram updates that happened from the month before, which you get in my, in my newsletter that goes out, but it's quick little synopsis. And then if you are a member of Profit Your Profile, we actually dive deep into all those updates. So we spent 45 minutes this week in Profit Your Profile just talking about the new algorithm, literally 45 minutes, what it means, what it means if you are an artist or a musician, what it means if you're an MLM, what it matters or what it means if you run a franchise business and you're under, a, you know, an umbrella type national organization, but you have franchises. All of these businesses are going to be significantly impacted by this algorithm change. So what does that mean for you? And so much more. That's what we talked about in that uh, in that training this week in Profit Your Profile. So if that's something you want to get in on, if that's something you want help with, check out Profit Your Profile. It is seriously priced for small businesses. It's $40 a month or $375 a year. And you get me every month, literally every week, you can have live access to me. I'm live in the membership every week of the year where you can come and ask me questions. And it's not me talking to a screen like this. It's you and me having an actual conversation. So the members love it. It's a great place to work through all those challenges, questions, and things like that that you may have about your Instagram strategy. So we have a couple questions up here that Christine just popped in. So Christine said, part of the recent algorithm change was about placing an emphasis on original content. Your previous post implied it was more about reels than content in the field. Should businesses with hundreds of locations and each with an account be concerned about each account using the same graphic? Okay, those are two really big questions. Christine, I'm gonna save this, this the question um, that you had about franchise locations. I'm gonna save that for another episode because that's kind of a long answer. Um, short answer is yes, it will be an impact. Um, however, you wanna make sure that the parent company is the one that is posting First, do you want to put a moratorium on the franchises? Do you want the national company to do it first? Then the franchises. The franchises can post it afterwards. They're not going to be punished with their followers. You can still use that content. It is not going to hurt you. What is going to hurt you is not showing up in recommendations and search, or not search, but explore. But that's okay, because the national brand will be showing up in those searches. So it's still there as a brand. You're the local you know, franchise location. They're just going to come to you. If they see it from the national brand, they're going to come to your local location. That's the quick 30 second answer. <laughs> so hopefully that dispels some things. But this is exactly what we talked about in Profit Your Profile was that exact topic. We talked about this for a very long time. So the other thing you were saying is the recent algorithm change was about placing an emphasis on original content. There's two changes to the algorithm that they mentioned. One is, yes, about the original content and protecting the original owner. So what this means is if I create a piece of content and then you take my video and you download my video and you post my video, if you have a bigger audience, if you get more engagement with your followers on my video, your version of my video does not go into explore and recommendations. My video does. That's the protection. So it's not hurting you. If you want to take my video, download it and put it up, great. You can still do that but you will only show up 
in, or that video will only show up in your followers feeds, you are not going to show up in explore and recommendations because I'm the original creator. And if it's a high quality video, my video is what's going to show up in that. So it protects the original creator. So that was the second component of the algorithm shift. Again, I have all of these talked about more in my recent posts. So go make sure you're reading those recent posts. Go check out my blog post at jenstrans.com that explains a lot of this in much more detail. So those resources are there for you. All right, so I wanna switch over to our tenacity part portion of the show for Tea Tactics and Tenacity where I have my cup of tea, which is almost done. I've been sucking away on this thing. So I've got my tea. We talked about Instagram tactic, which was why isn't reach and engagement so low on Instagram right now and what you can do about it. Tenacity. I want to talk a little bit about this because it's something I see, unfortunately, a lot. And it's 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 finding the fine line of balance between being authentic and violating your brand. So authenticity. I'm showing up with no makeup on. That's authentic. <laughs> it doesn't disregard my expertise, my value, and what I'm providing you, right? It's me showing up looking a little more au natural because it's Sunday morning and I'm gonna go for, you know, some exercise and I'm not gonna put makeup on. That's that's being authentic. Being authentic is, you know, showcasing that you've got, you know, laundry around your house as a real estate agent. Um, authenticity is, you know, talking about, you know, being a parent and being frustrated with your parents and or your children and things like that. Authenticity is great. We love authenticity. We want authenticity. We don't want fake brands. But at some point, you can violate your brand. So hypothetically speaking, if you're an interior designer and you are known for creating beautiful spaces, but if every time someone sees a video of your house, it is not well designed. It could be messy. You could have boxes and stuff. That's authentic. But if you're the place where you're always filming videos is not indicative of the quality and the brands and the customers and the clients that you work with, it can start to make it questionable about how much you're devoted to this, how much you really do, you know, commit to this, this career. Now that said, it, this is a bigger issue for coaches. So if you're a coach, if this is something where you're a life coach, where you are a productivity coach, where you are a, um, a business coach, where you are a, an Instagram coach, a marketing coach, whatever it is, you could, you could take all these different things. And when you can't live a life that's congruent with what you're teaching, it can damage your brand significantly. So hypothetically speaking, let's say you're a business coach and you're supposed to be out here teaching people all about business but you are filing for bankruptcy <laughs> or you, you know, you have serious money problems and, and you talk openly about how you have, you know, you're horrible at budgeting. You know, if you're talking about these things, there's a level of relatability and then it gets into violating your brand. Um, you know, if, if you are a productivity coach, but you're always complaining about how behind you are, or how overworked you are, or how, how tired you are are your methods of productivity actually working? If you're a life coach and you're always showing up in no makeup, disarray, your kids are driving you crazy, you know, you, you never show up on time, you have all these things consistently happening, but you're a life coach, are your life lessons something to live by? And I'm not, again, I'm not here to say that we don't all have relatable moments. like. As a life coach, you're going to have times where your kids drive you crazy. As a business coach, you're going to have times where business doesn't perform well. These are all normal things. But when it's what you're constantly talking about, you have to think about what you are putting out there. If you want to talk to your friends and family about it, go for it. But remember that when you are showing up publicly as a representation of your brand, it is really important that you are staying true to what that is. It doesn't mean being fake. It doesn't mean talking about things that you aren't actually doing, but sometimes it means kind of blurring the level of relatability that you're going to share. So 
you know, I will complain about Instagram. I'll be like, oh my God, another update. Like I literally on Tuesday when they dropped the Instagram algorithm update, I was like, there goes my week. <laughs> like there it goes. Now I'm going to be creating content all night, every night, pushing into like videos and content and all these sorts of things. I'm going to complain about the algorithm, not because it's not a good change, but because of the changes it makes to our, our, our impact, our strategy, our content, all these sorts of things. That's relatable, right? Everyone's going, oh my gosh, this is a great update, but now do I have to change my strategy? Do I have like, that's relatable. If I'm over here telling you, you know, you need to do this on Instagram, but I'm never doing it. If I'm telling you that, you know, Instagram is the key to success, but I'm constantly complaining about how I never get a client from Instagram, that starts to violate my brand, right? If I'm telling you, which is not true, <laughs> I do get clients from Instagram regularly, but if I'm sitting here constantly telling you how I can't land a client from Instagram, are you gonna hire me to teach you how to do Instagram marketing? No. So you have to find those balances between being relatable and valuing your brand when you are creating content for your brand. And it's something I see so many coaches do wrong, do incorrectly, where they try to be so relatable that they actually violate what it is their brand is doing. So if you're in that industry, if this is what you do, please just keep that in mind as part of your branding, as part of your content strategy, that you continue to honor what you do, that you respect what you do, and that you showcase that to your audience in a way that is relatable but and honest, but that doesn't violate the skill set and expertise that you are selling, that you are offering, and that you are being known for. So with that, I am going to sign off for this Sunday morning. Thank you for hanging out with me today on Tea Tactics and Tenacity. I am your host, Jen Herman with Jen's Trends, where we always have a cup of tea, talk about what Instagram tactic, and talk about one life lesson, whether that's business, life, parenting, whatever. And then we come in every single week, every Sunday, and answer those tactics questions from viewers just like you. So if you have a question you want answered, if there's something you want people to know, if there's something you've tried to Google and can't find the right answer to, if your boss is saying, well, we think we should do this and you want the right answer, by all means, submit those questions to me. You can send me a DM, send me a, an email, reply to this video, Whatever it takes, send me those questions and I will line them up for future episodes of Tea Tactics and Tenacity where I can give you the answers that you have been looking for. Again, thank you for hanging out with me this Sunday morning. It's a beautiful sunshiny day. I'm going to go out and enjoy it. And I will see you all next weekend. Actually, that's not true. Maybe I'll skip next weekend. I will let you know because next weekend is Mother's Day here in the U.S. and I might not show up, but maybe I do. It's my Mother's Day. I get to decide. So hang tight on that. I might be back next week. Uh, in the meantime, I hope you have a wonderful, productive, successful week ahead. It was great to see all of you. Christine saying, I'm thinking about joining your group will be more valuable than the pro chappy cheat. Yes, I can pretty much promise you that my membership, in terms of getting your questions answered, in terms of getting the training and resources you need, I can promise you I'm better than ChatGPT. Uh, but that being said, ChatGPT is great. There are a lot of ways to use it. And we have done training in the membership related to AI and how to use it properly uh, and how to make sure that you're putting the right prompts and the right information in there and not, there's a lot of misinformation about how to use AI. And I've had an amazing AI expert come in and do that as well. So there's always that resource for you if you want to check out Profit Your Profile. And you can cancel any time. For those of you who are interested in Profit Your Profile, sign up, do it for a month. If you don't love it, you can cancel and we won't charge you ever again. There's no commitments. There's no nothing. You just cancel your membership and it just, you leave the membership. That's it. So feel free to come in and try it out for a month and see if it works for you. Christine, I hope if you have any questions about it, let me know. I'm happy to answer those questions about the membership and see if you want to try it out. All right, everybody, have a wonderful Sunday. I will see you soon. Like I said, we'll see you about next week. But have a great, productive, wonderful week ahead. Thanks for hanging out with me today. Bye, everybody.